today. From SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California, it's week 16 of the NFL on EA Sports. coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Seattle Seahawks and the Los Angeles Rams. Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, you look at this Rams team as they interplay. They were winners last time out, so they'll be looking, Charles, to make it two in a row. And what I enjoyed when I watched their game tape and their victory last week is they put it together in every phase. Good offense, good defense, and some key plays on special teams. Let's see if they can get that second win in a row. They'll run back here on the opening kickoff as we'll start at the 25. So out come the Rams now for their first possession. And trotting out there, their tall quarterbacks, Dana gets 6'5". I like what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, He's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking talk about ordering dinner, ordering some I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. These are his numbers from last week's contest. 15 carries, 84 yards, and a touchdown. So he scored his eighth touchdown on the ground last week, and most guys I know, they want to get into round numbers. So, you know, 10 is really the goal, and this is one sport where being selfish and scoring touchdowns is a good thing. Look for he and the offense to try and get him in there at least twice in this game. Here's a run with Akers on second down. And he got half of what he needed there, two yards, and it'll bring up a third and two more. Well, this defense for the Seahawks, they were terrific a week ago in the win over Washington. It was a little bit enlightening talking with the defense coordinator about their performance last week because the feeling was... And the Seahawk defense gets to him and they bring him down. He couldn't get away there on third down. The pressure too much, and he's sacked for a loss of 12. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Fielded at about the 28. And now the rookie's free. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. 72 yards on the punt return. And the Seahawks are on the board first on the road here in L.A. They get the stop defensively, force the punt. They score without their offense even.
stepping on the field. I remember playing and playing on special teams and teasing the guys on offense. Like, look, you don't, don't even worry about it. You got to just hang out over there. We'll bring this one all the way back and get the points we need. In this case, they actually got that done. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. So after surrendering the punt return for a score, let's see what they can do in turn on this kickoff. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25-yard line. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. As the season winds down and you look at them in totality, you know, the offense has struggled. The defense has been pretty good, so I would imagine the changes this offseason may be more on the offensive side of the ball. And this is where we always hear the term complementary football because, as you noted, the defense has played well enough for them to win games, and the offense has held them back. So they've got to reward that defense by improving on offense. I don't know if you make a change at quarterback, running back, tight end. It doesn't matter. Get better players, better system, so they can play to the standards of the defense, and the win column will result. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Davis now. Back toward the sideline. He will have the first down. Good catch. He was able to keep the feet inbounds. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the gun, Davis. This one complete to me, Cole Hardman. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people, but you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. They'll run on first down with Akers, and he's going to be brought down at about the 33-yard line. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. Off the bootleg, Davis, and down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. By well, that time, it looked like he essentially just ran right into the pass rush. Yeah, partner, I'm not much. Under pressure, and they got to him again. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Here comes the Rams punter now. Remember, his first attempt was returned for a touchdown. He gets this away as he'll wisely, I'd say, angle this to the sideline. Seattle's first go on offense, forthcoming, and under center, of course, Russell Wilson. Well, in prep for this one, it was fun talking with the defensive staff because they had to review last week's game tapes where he threw for over 400 yards, and they started ho-humming that performance, and finally you said he threw for over 400. That's got to be significant. That's why he won the NFC Offensive Player of the Week. They're going to be careful <laughs> what they wish for ho-humming. He might do it again here in this one. On first and 10, it's Wilson. And he'll just get rid of it. Oh, I like that right there. Not only was it the right play, throwing it away like that, frankly, I think it was the only play. Yeah, got outside of the pocket, realized he had nothing, just chucked it free. Yeah, lived to fight another down, right? Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. Wilson now to throw on third down. Flush to his right. That's complete to DK Metcalf. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Now Wilson. Complete to Wheaton. Not much there, only a yard. To throw again is Wilson. Flushed out right. He'll find Metcalf. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. The numbers for him from a week ago. Three catches, 68 yards. And he's able to pull that last pass in, but this is usually a pretty tough unit to try and maneuver against. They're the top 10 in the league against the pass, and you and I both know there's not much difference between 1 and 10. And they work this near the 5. He'll be stopped at the 6. 
Solid catch there for a man who's been so brilliant this year. Worth pointing out, as we were talking about earlier, there has never in the 60-year history of the award been a pass catcher, tight end or wide receiver, that has taken home the MVP trophy. And the best receivers I've talked with, they know that step. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. It's a six-yard touchdown pass. And the Seahawks find a way to stretch their lead. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now 14 to nothing. 14 nothing the score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback, so they'll bring it out to the 25. As the Rams offense comes back out, here is the NFC playoff picture coming into the weekend. They've had it twice. They punted twice, not the start they were hoping for. Not at all, and let's face it, every facility we visit, everyone talks about converting on third down, how big that is. In this situation, they've had to punt it away twice, so they're furiously going over things on the sidelines. What do we need to do to pick up a first down and change our momentum? On second down, Akers. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. But this play sequence was really kind of called in reverse. Incomplete pass on first and 10. Nice run on second and 10 when probably everyone was expecting him to throw the football. Now, if you're the defense, what are they going to do on? Now, a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jamal Adams. And they'll start with great field position at the 41-yard line. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. After the interception, here's Wilson. That's into the hands of Parkinson, the tight end. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson. He finds his man complete. That's Castro. Now we're going to get a timeout here as it looks like there's a Seahawk injured on the play. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Not something you want to see in week 16 or any week, really. We'll be right back. Now here's a throw right side taken in by his tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Wilson will throw again. A quick target here, complete to Metcalf. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And this will be caught by Metcalf for a Seahawk touchdown. Russell Wilson with two first-half touchdown passes. Here the Seahawks are able to stretch that lead out a bit further. Extra point splits the uprights, and it's now 21 to nothing. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And this will not be brought out. It's a touchback. And as this offense makes their way back out, NFC playoff race time. We give you a look at what's going on there. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. What they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try and run for this with Akers. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. 
Uh, he just danced away from that one defender on his way to a gain of about seven yards. A good run got seven on first. Here's second and three. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. That was not a real confident throw right there. And he's just two of seven to start the game. Now he's going to have to find a groove with a big third down coming up. Let's see if his confidence can increase. On third down, Bonds. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And he'll get this to the 30-yard line before crossing over out of bounds. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. They'll run on first down. Akers. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Operating from the gun, Davis. This pass going to be caught by Hardman. Touchdown, Rams! Nicole Hardman, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Rams are able to draw a bit closer. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So that drive in total eight plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. Here's Russell Wilson and the Seahawk offense now getting set to go again. And the numbers for the last drive, and he was perfect, which maybe isn't surprising because he has not missed a pass in this game yet. And it lets you know just how precise things have to be for a quarterback to be perfect because that means... And now this is intercepted. My goodness. He's picked off at his own 47, and they'll set up shop in enemy territory at the 45-yard line. He's certainly not been afraid to take some chances downfield. Now, look, it's paid off for him a couple of times. That time, not so fortunate. And that's where I want to start, what you said. It's paid off a couple of times. So his aggressiveness has been good for his offense for the most part. So he throws an interception there. No one likes that, but I would not rein him back in. The return on investment thus far has been pretty good. Two touchdowns to one interception. And he'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. From the gun, Davis. Pressure comes, he's taken down by the Seahawk defense. The Rams gonna go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. After the sack on first down, Davis. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with 55 seconds to go until halftime. Here's Davis throwing on third and long. And he's going to be sacked. They sack him back right at the midfield strike. It's a loss of 10 on the sack, and it leads to fourth. Here comes the Rams punter now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And there'll be time for maybe one final play before halftime. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And only six seconds on the clock, so time likely for just one play. He's going to air one out. And that went a little too high as it's knocked away and incomplete. So we are at halftime here on Christmas Eve as we send you to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in everyone to this Christmas Eve edition of the EA Sports Halftime Report. So let's get to it. We'll begin out west at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. And it's the Cardinals who have the lead as they play the second quarter. Jalen Waddell, a touchdown reception.
from there, we're off to check out another game. And they were losers in that one to the visiting Tampa Bay Bucks. The Buccaneers are obviously going fishing come January, but they're looking to finish out strong. And they move to 4-11 with a victory there. Lastly, let's get to Pittsburgh. Check on the Steelers at home at Heinz Field. And they were victorious in that one over the visiting Baltimore Ravens. Najee Harris, well over 100 yards on the ground with a pair of touchdown runs. In our game has been Russell Wilson, who was dynamic as usual in that first half. His guys have a two touchdown lead as we hand it back over to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, coach, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Seahawks with the advantage, and they get the football first as the second half is underway. This will be fielded inside the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Hey, Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it, but I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities, and I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. They'll throw on first down with Wilson. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Touchdown, Seahawks. A big play there. His first NFL reception goes for six. And the Seahawks are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. And correct me if I'm wrong, that was just a simple fly route, wasn't it? No, there's nothing to correct at all. You've got it down pat. And I just remember as a player, when I'd be in practice sessions and I'd hear nine from the receivers, that meant fly route, go, uh-oh, look out. That was the nine, and he just kept going all the way into the end zone for the touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead now to three touchdowns at 21. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. And no effort to bring this one out. It's a touchback. Here again comes the captain of this offense leading his crew back out there now. And boy, Charles, they have to find a way to just get him some time to breathe back there. He's been pressured throughout this game. And I'll bet in his mind he's thinking the focus shouldn't be on how many times I've gone down. It's where is it happening? Where are the breakdowns up front? They'll never say it publicly because good leaders don't do that. But they've got to figure out what's happening in the offensive line to keep people away from him so he actually has a chance to throw the football because so far, that has not been the case. Five full sacks against him. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. From the 27, Davis taking a deep shot here for Hardman. And the defense loses him. It's complete. Touchdown, L.A. Nico Hardman with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Rams are able to cut into this lead. Extra point splits the uprights, and the lead will be cut down to 14. That drive started on their own 25. Two plays, 75 yards later, into the end zone. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. Their lead down to two scores after the touchdown a moment ago as they start with a first and ten. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off at the 49. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. 
Well, look, we're watching a quarterback here that's obviously been around for a long time. That's a throw he wishes he had back. He certainly does, but as you well know, this is a guy that's used to taking a few chances, used to fitting it into tight windows. These are throws that he's made before. Didn't happen to get it completed in this case. 65 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. Now Davis on first down. He'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Well, that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. Well, it certainly doesn't matter if it's been through the air like on this play or on the ground. I don't know what's going on with this defense. In a sense, they've been AWOL on this drive so far. Three plays, three first downs given up. They've got to find the answers, and they've got to find them quick. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Going right back to Akers. It'll go down as a two-yard loss, and it brings up a third down. And we often talk about defensive end setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers, but how about here? This is a cornerback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. Davis now to throw on third down. And this is caught. He's got a touchdown, L.A. A great play there. His sixth touchdown of the season. And the Rams are able to get back within a touchdown. Extra point up and through. And that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. That time, a six-play drive. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he's going to be out of bounds here right at the 20-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. And give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And it's a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Here's second and ten. Now it's Wilson. Dancing to his left. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. They're going to hurry back to the line now. Third and two. Now Wilson going for Metcalf on the deep ball. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. And how about the call here? They need two yards in their own territory on fourth down, and they're going to go for it. They'll try and run for it. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. Fourth and two in the NFL, not ordinarily a running down anymore. Usually that ball is moved through the air. They went ahead and gave it to the back, and he ends up picking up the first down. I'm not sure if they fooled him as much as they just did a nice job executing. Needed two, and they got three. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And he'll give it here to his running back. And he'll be brought down on what's going to turn out to be the final play of this third quarter. We're off to the fourth quarter here on Christmas Eve. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 
Another 13 yards there twice in a row, and they're on the move. Another first down as well. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely. You want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They go play action with Wilson. Forced out to his left. And smartly going into the slide there, Wilson has enough for the first. Well, there you go. Save your best scramble of the day for a big-time situation in the fourth quarter, picking up the first. You don't want to use it up early, right? Eva, make sure you save it for that exact moment, that key time. And that's what he did, although you and I both know it wasn't planned that way. But what a nice job using his eyes, scanning the field, and realizing when it was time to exit the pocket and go. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. A great effort there with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Seahawks are moving closer to a 15-0 record as they extend their lead here. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead now up to 14. So that drive goes a full 80 yards in 10 plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And he'll decide to not bring this one out as their drive will begin at the 25. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. After the long touchdown drive we just saw, you wonder if maybe that's taken a little of the wind out of this offensive sales because they had it going pretty good last time. And got his man complete! And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big connection on that one. 39 yards. Davis throwing on first down. He targets Ingram for another grab. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. Good yardage on the completion there. And when they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score. Touchdown! A great play there with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Rams have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Point after, right down the middle. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. And we will get another look at Seattle's offense. After the touchdown we just saw, we have a brand new ball game. And now look at the situation. You've got plenty of time on the clock. Defensively, they have three timeouts. So do you run the football here or do you throw it? I think you have that full conversation with your offensive unit. And you tell them, here's the situation. A fight for it, and this is caught. It's caught indeed. It's a big play there for Seattle. Oh, big plays back and forth just continue. Both offenses excel it. And I hear the excitement in your voice while you're calling this game. This hurts my soul as a defensive player watching these teams go up and down the field and put points on the Do board. Do me a favor the rest of the way. Sit back, relax, and just appreciate the offensive dominance that's going on out here. I'll give it a shot. To throw again on second down. Wilson. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown.
So now a two-point conversion attempt coming for Wilson and the Seahawks. Wilson going to throw for it. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver, ball's put on him, two points for them. This will be fielded inside the five. And they will wrangle them down a couple yards shy of the 30. Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Throwing on third and long. Davis into the hands of Ingram. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He's got Claypool. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. First down now, but that clock rolling. Looking to throw. Davis. And he's going to go down. They sack him back at the 42. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. And that is incomplete. And now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Operating from the gun, Davis. And that is incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it, and oftentimes, knock it away. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off at the 28, and his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. With the points that we've seen scored, neither defense has been at their best, but these guys, they've been a little bit better, Charles, and a nice interception there. Yeah, you're right about that, Brandon. Let's face it, it's not always... start it's how you finish right so maybe you have a rough game all the way along but if you make a big play like that at the right time it can make everything turn out just okay escaping the pressure right and for the right side here complete now the rams will signal for a timeout their second as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in the football game. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Oh, Wilson going to throw, eluding the pressure right. And Wilson's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off at the 40. And the Rams are right back in this football game. Now with that interception, you feel like we've got a ball game again. Remember, two-score contest and still time left here in the fourth. And in the old days... Not too long gone either. Throwing the ball here would have been an absolute no-no, but the way the game's played now, throwing it makes sense. You just have to be careful when you put it in the air. And a high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. 
A big offensive explosion help leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for the Seahawks, they are now two wins away from a perfect regular season as they move to 15-0. And, and they'll get another road date next week. Meanwhile, for the Rams, it's another loss as they now fall to 4-11. And, and they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in New Orleans against the Saints. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports.